Welcome to another episode of Crazy Time Gaming. My name is Jonas. I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite the Explosive One. Jonas, you're the man on the sticks. I am. We're playing Madden 20, the oh my Four to Nanas. God, I love it. It's so good. All of it. <laughs> life. <laughs> what? All right. Keep life in general's real, I have to admit dude. That life ain't ain't too shabby, Jonas. Yeah, life. dude. Um. Life is gooch. Yeah, dude. As uh. As I get older, mm, very old. Oh, so old! Jesus, I can't believe you're so alive. I sometimes. know, dude. Uh, hey everybody, it's the I've realized that, like, uh -huh. whether it's intentional or not, yeah, like, all the, oh, the Patriots are wearing zero. their throwback That's uniforms. The uh, <laughs> that I have like gotten to a point in my life that I'm pretty like, man. I put a lot of work in to get to this point, and like things are kind of in line, and like I've uh, I did that. Like, so you have a sense of pride or uh, self accomplishment. I get like it, and like I don't know if it's like I mean I've always like tried to like keep my ish in order, but like you know life is, happens, dude. Like life happens, things mess up. But like it's it's crazy like when you have like a general idea of like what you want in life when it's not like something ridiculous. Oh, look at me wheeling and dealing. Yeah, man. Some people get it. Some people get it quicker than others. That's for sure. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's definitely some 20 year old millionaires out there. When yeah, I was 20. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just. Uh, I was not a millionaire. That is all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just guess what I'm saying is like, you know, like it's like. I, I feel like I got myself to a decent point, man. Like, I'm not, like, a millionaire. Yeah. But, but like... You're stable, man. You I'm make, stable, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's, it's almost a shame how much we have to put on on, fi on finances because it's, it's so much more than that. It's, uh, it's a state of mind. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a way you interact with people. It's the way you interact with yourself is where that, that true growth and, and maturing really takes place. Yeah. And... I just don't know. Like, I think about it all the time. If I'd gone to college, like, uh, I mean, well, when I, <laughs> I did go to college, straight out of high school, I didn't take it seriously. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be an English major. And I was like, uh, I'm not going to go anymore. Yeah, right. And then I went to college later. And then I took that ish so seriously. And I got, I was Dean's List and just like, Sticking, putting my nose through grindstone, keeping in the books, graduate. Right. You know, I, I just don't know if being that young really. I don't know. I don't know if they're good bed bedfellows. Or youth and success. It's kind of like uh, like those child actors. You think of like Justin Bieber, like uh, right. Michael Jackson, or Little Wayne. <laughs> Little Wayne. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Michael Jackson, not not you know, he didn't have like the best upbringing because he was just steeped in affluence throughout his entire life. Yeah. Uh, Justin Bieber, same same kind of scenarios as well. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Lil Wayne has had his issues. He's, he seems pretty stable now, but you know, definitely had his issues. I don't know if those issues are any more or any less than what we experience, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, um, it's just, but it's just, yeah. I mean, I'm not even talking like financial either. It's like, yeah. It's just like getting everything in order. It's like it's it's weird to like be at a point in life where like I've cultivated a self culture of like not having drama and crazy stuff going on, and like it's yeah. my life is like my I feel like my inner peace level is higher than it's like ever been in my life. Like I'm just like. I'm good. I don't have a lot of outside stressors. I don't, I haven't, I have, I guess like pe the people I've brought into my life do not cause me yes. unnecessary stress. Yes. Like it's, it's just like, I feel like I'm surrounded by a good group of people. I feel like I like, you know, it's just, I'm in a good point where like, I don't have to be mad every day or upset or like, I'm just kind of, ah, uh, like I'm not super happy. I'm not like gonna like write a letter to my grandma about how good life is but like what are you just like batman level of happy just like zen dude 
<laughs> they call it in self-actualization. They call it, well, that's what they call it. They call it self-actualization uh, if you're talking about, like, Laszlo's hierarchy of needs. Right, right. Which is, like, first, like, baseline is, like, uh, like food. food and stuff yeah, like food, that. Food, water, shelter. And then, like, the highest level is that level of self-actualization or enlightenment is also what it is called. Uh, eh, I don't know, because I've felt enlightened, but I don't know if I'm there yet. What is, enlight- what is enlightenment to you, me? Enlightenment is... Whoo. A quick version. Whoo. I mean, we, we are on a short video. <laughs> what is, like, if you had to put... What is enlightenment? En- enlightenment in, like, a couple sentences, what would you say? Okay, in a couple... All right, to break it down, enlightenment is... is the culmination of not needing anything at least on like a base or physiological level as well as not needing to take anything as well as just being at peace with yourself being at peace with the things that are happening in the world um it, it is just like it's just taking have, everything as it comes and being like to a certain extent man it's even kind of beyond that like when you get to a level of enlightenment it'll be so vastly different from what you've gone through <laughs> on your day-to-day level that you'll realize it's like one of those things you don't know when you're there but you know when you're there it's like i feel and you know it's kind of funny it's kind of how i'm feeling i'm like where have i been this whole my whole like why have i not felt this way previously in my life Amen. and maybe that's what it's happened maybe that's what's happened i've hit the point where i'm like it's fleeting though i, I oh I, yeah it'll, it'll go gotta, away i'm sure gotta maintain well i'm not saying that it just goes away i'm saying you gotta maintain it takes upkeep but but I guess but I guess ultimately and you're right and I never and you know it's crazy it's like I'm well aware of Heis, uh, Laszlo's Laszlo's hierarchy. My hierarchy of needs like I went through management and leadership courses and stuff they talk about all that stuff because that's okay. how you make your employees happy too but I never had equated right now in my life to how many of my needs are met. And if all my needs that I need to be happy are met, whether I'm aware of it or not, that's why I probably feel the way I feel. Yeah, and I mean, we we are not rich. We no. don't we don't live in a super like swanky uptown. Nope. Right outside Times Square. But we also don't live in the hood. That is very true. Yeah. And Middle class. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'm I mean, not embarrassed. I definitely have a chick over. It. Yeah. <laughs> And be like, look, now how are you living? You right, know? and be like, hey, don't mind the crackhead by the dumpster. He's cool. He's harmless. He's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Jonas by the dumpster. Yeah, right. Yeah, dude. It's like, yeah. It's like I've had people come to our apartment complex and be like, dang, this is a nice place. But I've also had people come and not say a word because it's just like, ah, you know what I mean? It's not like it's yeah. not going to blow your mind. No, and, and that's not necessarily what what we even have it for. Right, exactly. We have it because it's the place to live. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I'm not, I'm not eating filet mignon every night. But when I go to the grocery store, I don't have to think about how much money I'm spending. Ooh, and see, but that's once again, that's that's getting into finance. But it's I mean, a, that's part, but that's it's, it's a big part. So that is part of it. it like is if a big I had part. to spend twenty bucks a week at the grocery store, it would be a stressor to me because I'm like, how am I going to eat this week? Yes, uh, I will say is that a certain level of finance has to take part in that self actualization only because it is. It's very hard to be poor. You can't. Yeah, you can't. It's yeah. If you can't even pay your basic bills to live and eat, mm-hmm. it's hard to be happy. Because you're like, how am I gonna pay rent and the bills and eat? And I've I've been there. Believe me. Double cheeseburgers. I got twenty dollars last me two weeks. I've said it before. I'll say it right, again. Right, right. I, I made two, that itch work. I can get a pound of ham and a loaf of bread. <laughs> there yep. I go. I mean, ham sandwiches all week. I remember I had a I had a, a car. I got into a car accident with myself. Go figure. Got into a car accident with myself. My car was in the shop for like six months because I just didn't have the money to get it out. I finally go to finally pay the car off, and dude was like, I didn't know if you were ever going to come back. I was like, yeah, You're man. Like, I like my car, dude. I was just broke. I'm just broke. I can only save up $50 out of every check and not, like, starve myself. <laughs> right. All right? So here. Yeah. Here's your money. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's just weird. It's, like, weird. It's, like, because, like you, like, you just said, need to get to get there, but when you get there, you know you're there. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it's, it, but it's so weird to sit and think and be like, like, is this what happens? <laughs> but on the same note, Jonas, this kind of ties into what I was talking about, like uh, child's born into affluence. If we hadn't experienced being broke, 
if you had or ne- having hard times. If you had never lived in a trailer, would you even realize that this was something that you could have? Right. Exactly. Like if, this feels amazing when we compare it to what we were doing in Ashton. Oh, I yeah. lived in Ohio Village. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I lived in Ohio right, Village. Dude, it's, and ass. it's like, and that's where I think uh, you know, like you said, the affluence. Like, yeah, because if you grow up in a mansion. Mm-hmm. And then you move out on your own, and you got to live in like an apartment like this. You're gonna be like, this, "Is this the hood? Like, why am I living in this?" When gym? really, that's an upgrade, man. Because now it's yours. Right. It might not be as good as what you were used, to, but uh, yeah, like I said, man. A lot of the kids that are born into me, I'm glad I wasn't born rich. Yeah, I am too. because it taught me a valuable, some valuable. Oh, life I would lessons. not be the, the person personality wise I am today, by sure. Yeah, I, I know. And then to think that. Like at least the financial security, it's never guaranteed. As most things in this world aren't, it's never guaranteed. If somebody were to take this from me, I can go right back into struggle mode real quick. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> it's like you know how to do. It. It's like right it, back. It, another comparison is like we grew up driving in the worst weather ever. We yeah. don't have to drive in bad weather, but yeah. if it all of a sudden snowed a foot in Austin, we'd be out there like I can get to the store. Yeah, everybody else <laughs> gonna flip their wigs. Man. Right, but we're like, oh, I got this. Like I know yeah. how to drive in the snow. Do I want to? Hell no, but I can. I think it's so funny what they like the weather they close schools down for now. Well, here, I think man. part of the reason, and I thought I thought it was uber ridiculous when I first moved here. Yeah, but I kind of get it a little bit because. They don't treat the roads, so if there is a little bit of snow, yeah. it's very dangerous to drive. Where in Ohio, they treat the roads, so if we get three inches of snow, it all melts. Not to mention everybody's ineptitude to driving in snow. Right, yeah, it's just like a... a Which, it's, it's literally to prevent everyone from dying. Yeah. So they don't treat the roads, and these people aren't used to driving in it. Believe me, I'd rather you keep them home. <laughs> Right. Shut the whole city down, yeah. please. Because, I don't want to die. Because, like, yeah, I drove with people who know how to drive in snow, and it still was scary. You ever had a? You ever had an accident because of snow? Yes, I uh, was. It was I, not with uh, someone else. I. Uh, I've been in a bunch of them, man. I have not, not I, myself. But. I. Uh, I slid like. The only one time where my car actually got hurt, mm-hmm. one time I slid through a stop sign and hit like a um, hit a uh, curb, mm-hmm. it, but it didn't mess my car up. I thought it did because I hit I hit one wheel diagonally, like my front. It's, I was going like twenty miles an hour, started braking, slid right into like a T bone intersection curb, mm-hmm. and I was like, I had to bend my rim. I didn't. I was lucky. Or cool. I could have got hit. Whatever. Another time I was driving down the freeway, going like go go. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I got. I was pointing at the screen. Sorry. I spun out on the freeway because of snow and hit a guardrail. See, now that happened to me, but I don't think it was snow. I think that was rain, and I just had, like, bald tires, and that happened to me, and that was when my car was in the shop for, like, uh, six months Yeah, I spun out in the rain, too, and almost died. I remember driving home from, like, downtown Cleveland, dead man's curb, man. It was a Sunday or it was like a holiday or something is the only reason that I'm still alive because my car did a freaking 360 on Dead Man's Curtain and I was like, I'm going to die. And there was just nobody there. There was nobody on the road. But like any other time, there would have been somebody on the road. I think it might have been Christmas because that would make the most sense. It was either Christmas or New Year's or something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely, man. So because of that, we have we have gained respect for the road and, and bad oh, weather God, conditions yeah. you learn how to you learn how to handle that stuff dude did i ever tell you a story about like i almost died in the rain when it spun out <laughs> did i tell you the story i may have told it on the podcast but you, i don't know if i told you the story did you drown i was driving to todd's house for a party yeah and i was driving on 480 in cleveland and it uh-huh. was raining really hard yeah and at one point you know 480 split there's like there's like a hill <laughs> There's a hill in the middle yeah. of the two lanes, one going east, one going west, or whatever. I was driving. I started planning and mm. fishtailing. Mm. Um, this was like midday. It was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That'll do it. I spun out. Like, I, I was fishtailing. I, I thought I had caught myself. My, my car spun out. I don't know how many times I spun in a circle. It was more than one. I went up over the hill. Towards the other lane of oncoming traffic. What? Damn, come on. I ended up facing oncoming traffic on the shoulder of the other lane. If I would have moved 10 more feet, 
I would have been in oncoming traffic and they would have hit me. Yeah. Dude, I would have died. Yeah. Because definitely... there was so much traffic coming. Car stalled out. I, 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 like, I stopped. I'm looking at oncoming traffic. It's like two feet from me. Just like, woo, woo, woo. Going by. My car isn't on. I'm like... Oh my god! I just like so. I tried to start my car. It restarted. I drove up you over restarted? the hill. Got drove up over the hill. Went down the other side and drove to Todd's. Like nothing happened. Oh, man. I was. I didn't realize I was like in a little bit of shock. <laughs> yeah, I was I like, oh, it. I almost died. Like I was that close to dying. The time I hit the guardrail, my car was not drivable, man. I was. Yeah, it didn't hit anything. I just spun out. Yeah, I hit the guardrail. My car was just like I was like, oh, my car's dead forever. Cops come by. I'm like, oh man, here come the cops. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, did you do? Did you steal this guardrail? You know, and I I'm have taking to, you in, son. I have to give it up to the cops because they could have easily been like license registration. I'd be like, I'm already having a bad enough day. <laughs> right. They stopped. They were like, see your ID. They were. They stopped. And they were like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine, man. My car is not. And they were like, all right. Uh, do you need a ride? And I was like, no. I got somebody coming. They're like, all right, have a good one, man. Oh, so they didn't even like. They just let it slide, man. And I was like, that was really awesome. Because they could have did a report for like a traffic accident and then you had to report, you know, all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. But they saw, I, I got, it was with myself. It right. was me and the guardrail. We had a fight. <laughs> the guardrail <laughs> won, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Yeah, man. Good deal. All right. That's all the time every day. So please make sure to like and subscribe and do all the fun things. Uh, if you've done that, uh, you know, go to the playlist. It'd be fun. Yeah, go look up that video where Jonas says, comes out of the closet. <laughs> Find it. That one. <laughs> For Jonas. TNT Dynamite. We are out.